Michael Red Welch was awakened in a cold sweat by the faint sound of his trailer's front door shutting. Concerns instantly flashed through his mind. Is it an intruder? Where's my shotgun? Am I dreaming? He held his breath and heard another sound, only this time what seemed to be something massive stepping into his home. Red leapt out of bed and stumbled toward the closet for his made in China 12 gauge shotgun, still in the manufacturer's box. He felt blindly for the doorknob and finally his hands found it. The room was nearly pitch black, lit only by the glowing light from his alarm clock and a silver of moonlight coming through his window. He reached in and grabbed the long box, fumbled it around, spilling shells all over the floor. In what seemed like seconds, the giant creature found him there in his room. So quietly and efficiently, it must have moved through the house. Red was frozen in fear with nothing but an empty plastic enveloped shotgun in hand, terrified. What's up guys, Iceman here. So this story is called Red, and it's seeming rather intriguing thus far. There have actually been a few incidents as of recently where a bear broke into someone's cabin. So it seems like that if you're not careful and if you live in bear country, you're not even quite safe in your own home assuming you don't take the proper precautions. But nonetheless, I appreciate you guys for coming by and watching my videos. This channel has been doing quite well, so I wanted to say thank you. And if you will, subscribe to this page and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a patron or a channel member. Links in the description below. And blessings to those who support the Iceman. So before I bore you with these bearing details, let's get in to this bear of a story. Red was a hardworking man, worked on cars as a mechanic, and was 37 years old when the incident happened. An ancestral mix of German and Irish gave a ruddy, pinkish tone to his skin. Growing up, it didn't take long for his friends to come up with his nickname, Red. He never went to college, but had various certifications through tech centers and worked his way up to a yearly salary of 50k. It wasn't much in Forsyth, Idaho, but it was enough to get by. Recently divorced, his wife left him soon after the adoption of their fourth child. He moved back in with his parents after the divorce. He had been raised in a traditional home. His conservative Christian parents had been less than thrilled about his current life circumstances, and he quickly grew tired of living under constant scrutiny. With his half of the divorce settlement, he purchased a modest two-acre lot, bordered by national land on one side. He placed a used trailer there that he purchased off Craigslist, illegally using the insufficient home as his permanent residence. It was a beautiful setup, secluded, one which even some of his friends would be envious of. A long dirt driveway connected to a dirt road. From most angles on his property, you couldn't even see his neighbors. It wasn't exactly the life that Red dreamed of, but it was the life he got. And as he would say, the life the Lord blessed me with. In addition to Red Welch, the Selkirk Mountains of Idaho are home to a growing population of grizzly bears in what is known as the Selkirk Grizzly Bear Recovery Zone. Current estimates place the population at 50 to 70 bears, which is about halfway to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's stated goals for the area, but a notable improvement from 1975 when the grizzly bear population had been listed as a threatened species. The Selkirk mountain range stretches from the Idaho Panhandle north to the southeastern end of British Columbia and west into Washington. The area is home to big game like moose, elk, bighorn sheep, and mule deer. And the historical predator population reflects the abundance of ruminant animals, grizzlies, Black bears, gray wolves, and cougars call the area home. 
The grizzly bear recovery zone comprises 2,200 square miles of ecosystem, roughly split between Canada and the U.S. Nowadays, with less than 70 grizzlies hunting the area, you don't expect to run into one every day. The night of the attack, grizzlies were the last thing on Red's mind. I went to bed that night, bitter about how my woman left me like that. Felt sorry for myself, had trouble sleeping as usual, I was upset. Thinking about my kids, and how I only get to see them on Thursdays, and every other weekend. Thinking about how unfair that was. I didn't even pray that night. The Lord did bless Red that day with the ability to face a grizzly bear head on and fight. Evidence suggests the flimsy door on the trailer was merely pushed open by the curious bear, which was later identified to be a 390 pound older sow. The bear was most likely desperate for food and was seeking the TV dinner Red left in his microwave before going to bed. The bear was malnourished, most likely due to her age and continual decline in her ability to hunt and gather. I made eye contact with it. I could feel my heart stop for a moment. I was fumbling around with a shotgun, trying to get it loaded, but was shaking so much I was unable to get a shell lodged in it. I had never even shot it before. At one point, a friend of mine tried to explain to me how to use it. He offered to take me to a nearby shooting range. I agreed. But with my busy life and nagging wife, it ended up just being another one of those things that I never got around to doing. The bear lunged at Red full force, the two colliding into the wall, knocking over his dresser, spilling clothing and dishes as they wrestled on the floor. It was noticeably larger than myself, and I've wrestled some big guys before, but this felt like something else. The Grizzly wrapped her jaws around Red's forearm as he raised his arms to protect his face and neck. That's when I finally realized what it was. I've seen bears before, but never this close. I knew it was out for blood, so right away I began thinking of my options. I remembered I had a crowbar right behind the backboard of my bed. Thank God it was there for home security purposes. I managed to crawl a few feet to where I could reach it. The bear still trying to hold me down and thrashing me around some, like a pit bull. Miraculously, Red was able to grab the crowbar and get a few clumsy but powerful swings in. Warm, slippery blood was on his palm from the bite on his forearm. But he squeezed the crowbar hard and swung with his left hand as hard as he could in the vicinity of the bear's head. She didn't flinch. He tried an upward, stabbing motion, and this time she bellowed and backed off momentarily. I must have hit her in the eye. I couldn't believe she backed away, and I had a second to get to my feet. He tried to rush past the bear to the door, but the angry bear swung a paw and Red felt claws catch his pant leg and deeply graze the skin on his thigh. Hitting the ground a second time and still holding the crowbar, Red felt a rush of anger overcome his initial fear. I started swinging the crowbar around and yelling. I felt a few hits connect with the head and nose. Swatted again, Red struggled to keep to his feet and this time was able to dart past the bear into the kitchen. There was the front door swinging open and he lunged toward it. The bear quickly pursued but was slowed by the unnatural environment of doorways and furniture to navigate. Red didn't stop to shut the door behind him, but ran breathlessly down his driveway toward his neighbor's property. The pull barn he knew would most likely be unlocked. Once the bear found her way out of the trailer, she gave up pursuit and headed back into the woods. The neighbor had heard the sound of the barn door slam and came to find a shivering, slightly bloodied, but not seriously injured Red panting in the corner of the barn. He was able to fully recover from his wounds with only minor scarring. Days later, the bear was tracked down and euthanized. Autopsy found a few broken teeth, including one major canine and a cracked eye socket, as well as a bloody and bruised snout. Sheesh, what do you guys think about this story? 
Isn't it crazy how we have actually seen in recent times several incidents of bears breaking into homes and cabins alike? What do you think you would have done in Red's situation? It's really odd that he owned a shotgun but never even shot it. I wonder what percentage of gun owners are in a similar situation. And hopefully, since the incident, he got himself a range membership for his sake. But let me know in the comments your thoughts on these matters. And like this video, if you will, for more chilling tales from the Iceman.